On the southern coast of Ireland lies the historic and picturesque city of Cork, which today plays host to an almighty show of shenanigans as 70 teams of friends, families and workmates gather from across the British Isles with an astonishing array of home-built soapbox racers. From magical to mythical to downright magnificent. Who will become part of Irish folklore and emerge the victor and who will crash out in a blaze of glory? This is the Red Bull Soapbox Race, Cork. Hello and Fulcher to Cork. Set in a glorious location along Ireland's southern coast, this place is a bustling city. It's also home to the Jameson Distillery, which houses the largest operational pot stills in the world, which produce a whopping 650,000 bottles of whiskey a day. Sounds like whiskey business to me. Oh, neat joke. <laughs> Thank you. Cork is also famed for Blarney Castle, home to the Blarney Stone, a limestone slab which will endow the gift of the gab to whoever kisses it. Obviously, me and Tim don't need to kiss it. Oh, no. Plus, the queue's really big today. It is, yeah, it's massive. And of course, when in Cork, why not have a game of hurling? It's Ireland's national sport and the fastest game on grass. Ooh, it is quite fast. Mm. But is it as fast as the Red Bull Soapbox race? 60 teams are going to line up at the top of that hill in the centre of Cork, ready to take on the steepest course in Red Bull Soapbox race history. And as they hurtle towards the finish line, fuelled by gravity and bravado, they'll be watched by a 70,000 strong crowd cheering on their antics. However, before we see who will sham rock and who will sham roll down this course, here's a handy little guide for anybody that's new to the world of Soapbox. A noxious cocktail of speed and creativity, the Red Bull Soapbox race has been held over a hundred times all around the world since its first event in 2000. From Atlanta to Auckland, Cincinnati to Sydney, thousands of fans line the course at each event as teams of amateurs drive homemade soapbox carts down a course littered with obstacles in the pursuit of victory. To win, each team is judged on three categories. One, creativity and soapbox design. Two, a 30 second performance immediately before their run. And finally, the time it takes to reach the finish line, should they reach it at all. Get more overall points than anyone else and your team is crowned Soapbox Race Champions. All that stands in the way is the course itself and this one is literally a corker. Drivers leave the ramp onto St Patrick's Hill. At a gradient of 20%, it is the steepest course in the Soapbox Race history. Drivers will accelerate rapidly through a series of tricky chicanes before reaching the Bone Shaker, a series of steps designed to examine the soapbox's build to its limit. Still rapidly accelerating, the drivers will need to keep control at high speed as they approach the next obstacle, the Double Berm. This will swing the car first to the right and then to the left. Control of speed and driver bravery will be tested to the fullest out of the berms, head straight over the final ramp and it's a celebratory cruise over the finish line. Tell you what, Gendo, they are mad for this and rightly so because this course is so steep. It is unbelievable. It's got a bit of everything though. It's weavy, windy, loads of obstacles, but the main thing is the incline. Oh. It is horrifically steep. It's scary at the top. It looks like you're looking over a cliff. Yeah. For me, I think this race is going to be won and lost on the brakes and the steering. And the driver. Yeah, that's pretty important too. Yeah. Well, the first of the carts is ready to go, so it means going to our man in the commentary booth, Mr. Darren Fletcher. Darren, what do you reckon? Fancy you go down this? Do you think I'm stark raving mad? Well, as you can see, it looks as though everybody from Cork is here today. This extremely steep and extremely fast course, and they've got to navigate these soap boxes down. 320 metres or so in length, the first 200 is ridiculously testing. We've got a fantastic atmosphere here today. And the first team on the start ramp are Jet Set Go, Kieran Connor Ronan and Aidan. They are the team, uh, recent college graduates from Dublin. And the theme basically came from their love of travelling and exploring the outdoors. Today they will travel and explore, and off they go. And it's extremely steep at the top, as you can see. The first, oh, he's lost it already! Down they go, jet set go. Didn't go very far, did it? 
all the speed at the top, couldn't keep it straight. Into the straw bales, check your elbow. There'll be lots of grazes and scrapes here today, that is for sure. But as they always like to do, they'll try and get to the finish, but this is by no means a formality, as you can see. That gives you an indication of just how fast... Oh, he's gone again! I was just about to say, there's the berm, it might just slow you down, and he never got there. And they'll try and pick him up, dust him down, and that might be the best way to go. Go on, boys. The crowd cheering them down. Jet set go, we'll make the finish line, but not how they wanted to. What about the time? One minute, 26 seconds. Well, they set the mark, and you never know on a day like this. That might well be competitive, because this is one heck of a difficult circuit. And what happened on the berm? I mean, before you even got to it, you were over the front. We were expecting to take off. Didn't quite work. In fact, nothing worked. Well, I don't think it's going to work now either. Look at that. Well, um, at least the brakes worked. We weren't really sure. Do you know what? The crowd loves you guys as well. <laughs> Unbelievable. Can't imagine why. It was incredible, boys. Off you go. Good work. OK, so uh, Granny Mahal uh, come next. Um, a lot of these soapboxes take quite a bit of building and a lot of thought goes into this design process. I'm not necessarily sure that that's happened with this one. It looks a bit rickety at the top to me, but who am I to make that suggestion? We know it's steep and we know it's fast and we don't think it's going to last very long. Oh, there he's straight away. The side's gone. He's not even hit anything and the side's fallen off, which is not a good sign. They've actually got an engineer in their team, but maybe he's keeping that quiet. Maybe he was at work the day they built it. Down he goes, though. He's really picking up some speed, though, now. He's using that foot just to keep it straight. There's the bone shaker! Oh, he's shaking him off. The bone shaker couldn't hang on. It's a good job he's got the back protector on because he's so low to the tarmac here. He's trying to get the legs wide to get some balance, but he's just not going in a straight line, is it, this one? Granny Mahal moving down towards the finish line. Still going, though, which... On this course, today, with this steepness at the top, not too many will do this, and he's still going strong into the straw bales, but no harm done there. They're all enjoying it, aren't they? And over the... Oh, that last little run, there we go. 1.33. It's not too bad, really. I thought that might be a bigger time than that. What happened? Uh, well, the brakes failed, the steering failed, the front wheels started buckling, the back wheels started buckling, the mast fell off, the entire body fell off. But all the wheels are still on! Hooray! Just... It didn't look great from the start, I'll be honest. No, no, that's fair enough. We spent €8 Euro on it. This is the first time we've all been in the same place. It broke yesterday on its first test run, and it broke today on its first real run. What are you going to do with this now? Rebuild? Burn it. Burn it, probably a better thing to do. Back to the top. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Start setting the fire around that one, Granny Mahal. Now we've got the rebellion job. I think it's safe to say, even this early in the competition, not too many are going to get down this steep hill in one piece. Um, off go rebellion job with the smoke billing out from the back. He's enjoying it already. Oh, there goes his hat. That's the first problem. Loads and loads of speed, though. Look how fast he's flying down here. But can he go? Oh, no, he can't. Look at that. The berm is where it tends to slow you down, and if you can get through the berm in one piece, you're OK. He's trying so hard to pull the brake on, but it didn't do any good at all. And look at that for a spectacular off at the berm for the Rebellion job. So pleased to see that the driver is in one piece, unscathed and still enjoying it. That could have been a serious situation for Rebellion job, but he's going to make it all the way down to the bottom, albeit with that big off halfway down and in a time of 56 seconds that would have been so fast had he kept it going but look at this oh i think he might be the bravest man i've ever met <laughs> what happened you lost the helmet but you didn't decide to break no that was the plan just straight out no brakes it was unbelievable the whole crowd were like okay he's not slowing down he's going for it and then you had the crash how was that it was OK. Not, I think it looked worse than, than it actually was, to be honest. I feel OK. I think it's more amazing the fact you kept your pipe. <laughs> that, that was impressive. It's still there. Oh, yeah, here it is, guys. Ah, there we go. All sorted. You actually had brakes on this thing. Ah, got rid of them. Join us after the break for more thrills and now spills, courtesy of the Red Bull Soapbox race here in Cork. Woo!
Yeah, it's just catching yeah. your hair a little bit. Oh, we're on, guys. Way, hey. Yeah. Welcome back to the Red Bull Soapbox race here from the beautiful Irish city of Cork. As you can see, there's still a bountiful supply of ridiculousness on offer. So let's head over to our man in the commentary booth, Mr. Darren Fletcher. Yeah. What do you say about that? And now we go to Trashinator 5000. A group of friends, this team, the driver is Alan, and the soapbox is designed to look like trash. If it drives like trash, they could be in trouble. Off they go. All the early speed, all the early wobble, and then the straw bails, and he's out. He's out. He lasted seconds, didn't he, Alan? Knows what the concrete feels like now, doesn't he? Always doomed to failure, that one. He'll need some help, I think, because there's not much left of it. That wheel is uh, not in great shape, is it? He's done well to get it moving again, bearing in mind he's effectively on three wheels now. Oh, he's gone again! He's gone again! He's gone again! It's the soapbox equivalent of going over the handlebars. There we go, oh, there you go. Exit stage right, Alan. Oh, carry it down, fellas. What's the time? One minute and 16. There we go, look. Ooh. That'll leave a mark. He's only got one shoe. Where'd your shoe go? I was up there somewhere, I don't know. You kind of double ejected. The first one looks pretty heavy on the back. And the second one was just almost stylish. Yeah, so it's graceful, so I'm very graceful. So ejector seat kicked in then. Didn't realise you installed the injector seat, but yeah. I didn't realise the hill was actually as big and that I was actually as unfit to catch up with him to give him another push off. But You're probably quite warm in that thing too. I'm absolutely on fire in it. Good effort, guys. Hi, I'm Nathan uh, from Team Performer. On the team, we have Jamie, who's team leader, and Nicholas, chief design, I suppose, and Darren, who is chief of manufacture. And I'm the driver. We all know each other because we work for the same company. We perforate and we form. What we're most proud of is the fact that every single component has been manufactured by us. We're confident in the performance. The, the wheels run smooth, our steering is good and it's responsive. As far as we're concerned, you don't need anything else. You, know, you don't need the fancy suspension. You need to have guts. And, that's us. It's not a case of, do we think we can win? We know we're going to win. We're going to make a molehill out of Patrick's Hill. We're going to conquer it. And the rest of them, I hope they like to taste the hay. Fighting talk indeed from Performer. Uh, the molehill that he referred to has seemed like a very steep mountain so far. Nobody's made it down unscathed. The driver, by the way, Nathan's a bit of a moonwalker. Let's see whether this is a moonwalk for him. Down this steep hill, 20% incline, loads of speed over the bone shaker. This one's really moving and it's solid and it's steady and it's doing what they said it would. Can they get around the berm? Yes, they can. The brakes were used there and it slowed that soapbox right down. This looks a really good run around the corner, over this little ramp, which shouldn't test it too much. And you can see just how it slows the course down when you get around the berm. If you can get past the top section, you really can relax the rest of the way. There they are at the finish, 41 seconds. The most significant thing is they are the first team to make it down without a crash. You must feel amazing. I mean, the crowd must have really got behind you. You must have felt that. Are you ready, guys? Quite a solid run in the end. Good, good time as well. It's actually quite rude, really. Killer Unicorn is next. It looks anything but a Killer Unicorn. If you're ever going to be killed by a unicorn, you'd probably pick this one. And it's already in terrible shape at the top. Look at it at the back. He can't keep it straight. Why word. I'm not sure those wheels are round, are they? Off he goes. That's what it looks like from the inside. Uh, ben is the driver. That's the bone shaker. Oh, it's gone now, look. It's never looked good from the top, this one, has it? The old killer unicorn. <laughs> oh, dear. Still, still they go. Killer unicorn back on the road. Go on, boys. Still a fair way to go. Oh, he's lost it again, look. Dear me, they can't believe it. 
Go on, drag it down, fellas. There we go. 133. Lessons to be learned, I think, for Team Killer Unicorn. The design process let them down a lot. Dude, that was unbelievable. I mean, from the very start, you lost the wheel. Oh, I'm all on my shoe. I lost my shoe on the first turn. Your shoe uh, as well? Yeah, my shoe's gone to right there. We built it in three days and it really showed, so... Yeah, it was very poor put together. Three days? You built that thing in three days? So you were shaking from the start. Oh, man, it's so tough to drive. I just it couldn't, it wouldn't go straight for me. Just, the steering just kept wobbling like it was a disaster. And the second crash, did the handlebar come off? The steering wheel came off. Yeah? Yeah, so that's why you have to carry it. It was kind of all over then. Oh, it was carnage, yeah. It was game over when that happened. Hi, I'm from Team Middleton Fire and Rescue. First of all, we have Ken. He's the driver mechanic in our station here. Then we have his brother, Michael. Then we have Dougie, who has just started with us, even though he's just about to turn 50. <laughs> And then we have the other kin, and my name is Mark. The top box looks like a mini fire engine. We got a lot of blue lights and sirens, and we spent a bit of time putting the frame of it together from old bicycles and old school furniture, I'm hoping that we won't crash into a bale of straw, because we might have to call out a fire engine. <laughs> the four of our jobs are to push kin the driver off, run after him and pick him up every time he falls over. It's our job to make sure he gets down in one piece. Do we think Ken is going to take it slow and steady? No. He's not going to take it slow. I think the best feature on the soapbox will be the brakes. When you actually pull one lever, the two back brakes will lock. You need to skid around the corner fairly quickly. It's easy to skid them. If any other team are watching, just to let you know that if you do crash, we won't be helping you. We're off duty and we'll be too busy winning. So Middleton Fire and Rescue. Now this looks the part, doesn't it? But you might have noticed on the film, it's got the handlebars to steer it. And history and experience tells me that's not necessarily the way to go. Especially not when you've got a hill as steep as this. Down it goes. The wood might crack, but the brakes are good. Let's find out. Oh, he's gone straight away. That's a huge off. He's OK. It's those handlebars. Look at it, you can't steer it. You're going so fast. And whether the brakes work well or not, they didn't work well enough there, did they? Look at this. Over he goes, he knows he's lost it. Nothing he can do there. Down towards the bottom, breaking up as it goes. It's quite quick again now, though. Look at it now, certainly hurtling down this course again. Oh, he's lost it on the berm, yes, he has. Too much speed again on the berm. If the cat gets stuck up the tree, don't call these boys. On they go, over the ramp, down towards the finish line. They will post a time, one minute and 12 seconds, with two massive crashes. He knows, look at his face, it tells the story. Oh, oh don't stand there. It was quite a crash in the end, wasn't it? It was a crash, but look, in this, you're transformed to 10 years of age when you were a child racing go-karts. That's what we did, we went mad. Does it all go in a bit of a blur and all of a sudden you're at the bottom and it's done? Yeah. And all the cuts and tears the broom. Oh, the <laughs> second one when you went on the side, I was like, he's going to lose some skin now. Yeah. Fact, let's have a look at that. Oh, that'll be all right. Battle scars, man. Battle scars. Got to be tough here if you want to be competing today. Count on Dracula and the performance includes a marriage proposal. It's a long way to go to get the marks, isn't it? Some of these team members will stop at nothing to try and win today. There we go. So count on Dracula. Now, they aren't his feet, by the way, that you can just see popping out the front unless he's about 19 foot tall. And he nearly hit the lady that he just proposed to at the top, didn't he? Anyway, down we go. And the coffin hurtling down. He's enjoying it at this stage, isn't he? Look at that. So far, so good. Got to get around the berm. Yep, through there, no problem. Now, can he keep some momentum here? Because this is where the soapbox starts to slow down. Really steep at the top, much flatter towards the bottom. And he's still trying to wobble it forward to keep it moving. Moving down towards the finish line. He's done really well in a time of 58 seconds. He's engaged, he's at the finish, and he's got the longest legs any of us have ever seen.
My name is Conor McCarthy and I'm the captain. On the team we have Colin Trant driving, Ian Boran pit crew and Conor Burke pit crew as well. The inspiration for our design was good versus evil. In tribute to that, we're dressed like priests fighting a devil on top of an altar. The strongest features of this soapbox are its ability to not be flipped over. It's big and it's square like an altar, so this thing will not be flipped easily. Its weakness is definitely the wheels because in our first test run, all four fell off. I am not confident. Our steering wheel is quite small and it's quite hard to drive without hurting your fingers. The driver is very nervous because the top of the altar is leveled at head height, so any stoppage will result in decapitation. I would warn the other teams not to be standing near the finish line when we're there. We're going to be going fast and the brake won't work. So if we see you, we're going to hit you. So apart from all that, they're pretty confident. Holiest show on earth. They describe themselves as a group of young priests looking to make mass sexy again through the magic of soapbox. We will wait and see. They've got slight concerns over the wheel, the brakes, the steering, and the seat. And they're, oh dear, it's not too sure about this one early on. He's, he's not in control, is he? The soapbox is in control of the driver rather than the other way around, which is not a good, oh, he's wobbling away, look. Still keeping it going, though. Now, there's the straw bale. <laughs> there's the straw bale. Gets around the berm, he's got the other one now. He should be okay to get down towards the bottom from here. There's the, there's the bone shaker that was shaking them up a little bit. Down towards the finish line, what have we got? 57 seconds, and he didn't know much about that, did he, at the top? The soapbox steered him down. Colin, the driver, was being steered by the soapbox. That was incredible. At the top, though, you were wobbling all over the place. What went wrong? Uh, it was probably to do with the handling. The handling could be a little bit better. Uh, I think that's all it was, but we learned our lesson. We'll be back next year, maybe, bigger and better. Well, whatever's wrong with this, you also get that scene, too. Well done, mate. All the best. So, Ecto Ghostbusters come next down this extremely steep circuit in Cork. 20% incline. It's so tough at the top to keep it straight and keep it quick. There goes Ecto-1, down it goes. The onboard camera showing just how steep and fast it is. Rattling through there all right, got to keep it straight though. Sometimes you pick up that much speed, you just can't control the soapbox and that might be the problem here. Well, he's around the burn, the first one, oh! He can't get around the second one. It's a good job the fence was there, he would have been off and into the crowd. They're not his teeth, by the way. Look at that. Oh, they knew he was coming. They're going to drag him down to the bottom. 57 seconds. Not too bad at all. So Daddy Slow Down is next. Don't try that at home. Now, this soapbox costs less than 50 euros to make. And that's not a real man on the front, in case you think it is. Down they go, that really steep part. Of the... Oh, he's gone! He's gone straight away. <laughs> it's a good job that's not a genuine fella on the front. Face first into the tarmac would have been the story. Let's see how they do now. Got to get going again. Trying to pick the speed back up again. He's still kicking along, whether he's... Oh, he... <laughs> now you can tell it's definitely not a real man. Uh, the fellow at the back is uh, struggling to see. Uh, the legs are still pumping away. They're trying to get the other fellow up right now. <laughs> and they go down the steep part of the circuit. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone face first into the hay bales. <laughs> the mannequins seem better days. There's still quite a way to go. There's the berm look. And they're desperately trying to get this soapbox down towards the finish. It's one of the funniest ones I've seen. Getting a big push now from behind, which perks the fella up on the front of the bike. Down they go towards the finish line. Let's have a look at the time when they get there, if they can make it. Down they go, one more collapse for the cyclist. Push him up again, that's it. Get him out of the way. Get down towards the finish line, and there we go. Oh, they've got to get at the end. <laughs> he's out as well, look now. Oh, he's enjoyed that. There we see it, look. 
over that bone shaker and it shook every bone in the mannequin's body. Oh my goodness! Yes. Maybe the best thing I've seen ever in my life. Unreal. That is the worst cycler ever. I don't know what, I should have been up there and he should have been in the back. I was going to say, I mean, it's meant to be a team effort and he kept giving up. I know. I was saying, he kept leaning on me. I was just like, come on, you need to see where you're going. One minute he was like, I'm just, no. And then he was like, oh, no, forward. But absolutely incredible. The fans loved you guys. Yeah. This could be your day. Yeah. Amazing yeah. job, put it there. Yeah. Fantastic. It's time for a quick break, but before we go, we're going to delve into our Soapbox archive, and all you have to do is guess what happens next. We'll see you in a bit. Now he goes through the chicane. There's still the kicker to come. Here he goes then towards the kicker. Ah, <laughs> welcome back to the Red Bull Soapbox race here in Cork Island. Now, before the break, we dug into the Soapbox archives and challenged you to guess what happens next to this flying four-wheeled coffin. Here he goes then towards the kicker, straightens it up, over the kicker, oh, it's a fantastic run. Slightly heavy on landing, really good run. Oh, he tries to stop it and he rolls it past the finish line, but he punches the air. He's in one piece, thank goodness. And that's what happens when you drive a four-wheeled coffin recklessly. Let's hope this bunch of monkeys fares a little bit better. It's over to Darren Fletcher with the commentary. Thanks, Tim. So from one coffin to another, the coffin dodgers become crazy coffin here in Cork. Today, Adara is the pilot under the black helmet. And we're hoping that this one fares better than the one we saw on either side of the brake. Down we go. Lots of speed at the top. This very, very steep circuit. Not very long, very steep, very fast. Very difficult to control! And backwards into the bales. Did quite well, actually, not to roll it there because there was so much speed going into that section of the course. Off they go again. Crazy coffin, back in a straight line. Around the berm! Ooh, like it. There's a cameraman just there. We'll see it here. Over we go! Ooh. That's the shot. Look how close it was. And they carry Crazy Coffin down to the finish. Here we see it again. That's the first spin backwards into the bales, but all the spectacular... Oh, there, oh look at that. Phil, the cameraman, just managed to lean back in time. Hi, I'm from the Jumbo Breakfast Roll team. I am Nigel, the driver. We have uh, Mark, who's an engineer. James is in the mechanics. And Miles is another engineer. We all know each other through, mostly through motorsport. We do rallying together. Driving a rally car, I'm used to the rush of speed and taking bends at high speeds, so I think the speed won't be a problem, especially when you put on the helmet, fear goes out the window. And the main design is based on a jumbo breakfast roll. The frame is indestructible, it's very, very solid. We have go-kart wheels on the front and steel wheelbarrow wheels for the rear. And one of our practice runs over a jump, we almost went face first over and I, when I pulled in I was shaking. There's about it was six inches of insulation really all around it. It's probably the safest thing to go down the hill in. I've been told no brakes allowed. Our message to the other teams is Jumbo Breakfast Roll is going to win. Well, they all share a passion for speed, this crew. They're a group of motorsport enthusiasts and apparently Nigel, the driver, has always had an ambition to go down St. Patrick's Hill in a giant breakfast roll. So he's about to fulfill a lifetime's ambition here today. Uh, whether they can do a fast time remains to be seen. They've lost a piece already, but they're showing lots of speed at the top of the course. One of the baked beans has just gone off, uh, but that's OK. Loads and loads of speed here. So whether they can keep the speed through the berm, where so many people have struggled to do, well, he's been able to do that. Look how quick he is through there. That's as good as we've seen at that section of the course. And he's managed to keep some speed up as well. As he hurtles down towards the finish, he can smile as well. This is a fantastic run from Jumbo Breakfast Roll. 37 seconds, what about that? He knew at this point that he was onto a good thing. He kept it straight, kept it fast, and they've set the mark today. So now we go to Sheepies, who have got something to live up to. Now they are sheep facilitators, and that is a sheep pen. Well, it's a soapbox based around the sheep pen, obviously, but 
It's meant to look like a sheep pen. Whether it's good downhill, we'll wait and see. And the, oh, the early indications are that it's not, because he's hit the bale straight away there. Let's see whether they can get this thing straight, get it moving and keep it under control. Too short at the moment. He's trying to lean. Oh, he's got to get along. He's trying to lean. You can't use your body in a sheep pen. Perfectly down St. Patrick's Hill. There's the on-board. That's what it looked like to the driver. He knew, didn't he, early that he was going there. Go on, give him a good shove. Down they go. Trying to get to the finish line. All oh, around the berm, just held it there. Still they go, look, towards the finish line in a time of 1.23. The moral of the story is don't try and drive a sheep pen down St. Patrick's Hill. It's a recipe for disaster. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> So now we've got House of Horrors, which is a ginormous soapbox. You don't see many this big. It's made out of a steel space frame with motorcycle wheels, and they tell us great brakes, we'll see. Uh, lots of weight to it, which might bring speed. It might also make it difficult to control. It's so far so good, though, isn't it? At the top part, the really difficult part, the berm is where it tends to ask you the question. There's the berm, oh, he can't control it. Right where Phil, our cameraman, was standing again. Look at that for a shot. That's how close it was. Too much weight in the soapbox. They couldn't get it round the berm, and now they've got no alternative with that buckled front wheel. But to push it down towards the finish, they will make it to the bottom. 103. There is a car there somewhere. Try and find the driver. Driver! Where's the driver? Driver! Come here, quick! What an amazing run. You were kind of ploughing through everything. We were running through. Just uh, the berm caught us. You nearly ploughed clean over the berm. <laughs> I thought he was just going to dry over it. I think the cameraman was very lucky there, wasn't he? Yeah, we've got a cameraman up there. I hope he's all right. Amazing run, though. You were kind of catching hay from the start. I was like, nothing's going to stop this guy. Oh, the track was too narrow for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had a wide vehicle. Very wide vehicle. Well, good job, man. Fantastic you, work. Totally enjoyed it. All the best. So now we go to the next team, Donald Trump's wig. Yeah. So that's Donald Trump's wig. And off they go. Looks a little bit like some loft insulation, but let's not worry too much about the minor details. There he is, on the back of the soapbox. The sombrero balancing delicately on top of that helmet. That's the view down the steep part of the circuit. Lots of speed at this stage. Uh, can he hold it? Oh, no, he's rolled it. He's OK, though, look. Ooh. It's basically based on a theme of Mexicans stealing Donald Trump's wig. That's why he's got the Mexican flag around him and the, the sombrero on, but... No, I don't know either, but that's what they've done. So down goes Donald Trump's wig. He's going to need a big push again towards the end. 103, well, it's not bad. It could have been better if he could have kept it straight and on all four wheels there. Mate, I want to tell you how much I enjoyed that run. How did it feel? I tell you, the adrenaline was pumping through it. It was a very hard turn there. I think I could have gone faster, but hey, I'm happy. It's I'm tight. Happy. It's tight on the berm. You kind of had the impact of the hay into an instant roll. <laughs> yeah. It just went flat, dead flat. I was going for the full roll, go again and keep going, but hey, sometimes you don't win. Hey, I'm from Team Axel of Evil. And my name is Jack. On the team, we've got Seb, who's the creative mind behind the car. He's got the technical skills to put the whole thing together and has the vision in his head. I'm getting all the credit here, but in fairness, it was a small amount of collaboration between all of us. And then Dave and Fionn have got their artistic passion behind it and doing fishing touches to the actual car itself. And we've got Mark, the driver, who's going to take us down the hill to victory. He's just a lunatic behind the wheel, and he thought he was the best man for the job. He missed a calling as a rally driver, I'd say, at some stage. For a start, I don't actually know where we are. <laughs> We're kind of in, in between Ballangiri and Inchkeela in sort of the heart of West Cork. 
it's such a good spot because there's just so much space. You can put stuff everywhere and lots of scrap around to actually use. We had a few cups of tea and ran through quite a few ideas and then eventually we kind of settled in one and I drew it all up. The soapbox is created out of an old Fiat Pinto that Seb actually rolled a few years ago. <laughs> and then three different bikes and then we've got the front shocks off a car reinforced with extra springs. The fact that it leans is probably going to give us an advantage over carts that don't. We enter the soapbox to win the race, realistically, and just have fun doing it. If we win, we will probably be quite ecstatic and probably get quite drunk after. Yay! <laughs> so from one Donald Trump-themed soapbox to another, Axel of Evil. And a lot and lot of work has gone into making this particular soapbox. Whether it works, we will wait and see. I think we're expecting this to be fast. It's basically made of two bikes and a car. So lots of different components have gone into making this particular soapbox. And it looks streamlined, and off it goes. Axel of Evil with lots and lots of speed at the top. The driver is Mark, who's over the bone shaker and he's managing to hold it. Slightly strange steering device, but it seems to be working OK. Oh, look at the speed here, through the berm. Oh, he couldn't hold it and he's rolled it. He was looking so good into the berm, so much speed at the top. It's as fast as we've seen anybody today, but too much speed going into the berm. There it is, just couldn't stop it quickly enough. Those brakes not working in time. There's Donald Trump's head on the way down, and that's what's left of the soapbox. Now, they're going to finish. 133, it's not what they came to do. They came to win, and at that stage, they got a chance. At that stage, they got none. So next up, Taste the Rainbow. Uh, Glenn, the driver, is an interesting character because a few weeks back, he thought he'd had his car stolen and then realised about a week later, he'd left it parked in the pub. So we don't know what to expect. We have got an exploding device on this soapbox, we're told, and chocolates may well spray into the crowd. Uh, we've also got the first few leprechauns, as you spotted at the top, which it's taken a while. Anyway, Taste the Rainbow is on the way. Watch out for the chocolates if you see them. There's the exploding chocolate box. And there's the berm! Oh, didn't do the berm, did he? He did one side of the berm and then lost it going the other way. There we see it. Certainly the place to be standing today, isn't it, on that berm? It's the most spectacular part of the course because they're carrying so much speed into that section. And just like so many others today, they'll need a push. Good old leprechauns on hand to... Uh... Oh, there's the, there's the chocolate box exploding, there we go. Not quite as spectacular as they expected. 108. It's all looking promising at this stage, but they just can't get around the berm. Hi, I'm from Team Ticket to the Moon. My name's Matt and I'll be piloting the hammock. We've got Alan, Patricia, and Stuart as my crew, and they'll be shoving me over the hill. It's a wooden hammock stand bolted onto wheels. It's made of parachute silk, so it's very thin, so very little protection. I've only got a thin cushion between my backside and the wood. I know it's a straight road, but there's quite a few bends and berms. My front axle pivots on one central point, which I think will help me on the berms, because all four wheels will stay on the surface all the time. My biggest nemesis going down the hill is going to be the jumps, because I'm only sitting in a hammock and I'm not in a proper seat. I've got a handbrake between my legs, which uh, <laughs> could do me some damage if anything happens. <laughs> Just got to go hell for leather, sit back, relax, and go fast as you can. OK, so ticket to the moon, I think Matt we can confirm he's going to be sat in a hammock on the way down. It's a wooden hammock stand bolted to wheels. He's wearing protection, as he told us, and he's got a handbrake between his legs. Apart from that, everything is uh, open to interpretation. Down they go, and he's got a lot of speed at the top of the circuit. Really quick down there. Over he goes, over that little bone shaker. Still manages to keep the speed. He's got the berm to come, and he always oh, just relaxed a little bit, and he's gone into the straw bales, look. And he's collected some of the branding, but he's managed to get rid of that which means he avoids the burn. He's got to pick up a bit more speed, though, because he's gone really slow. He's started to celebrate, and he's over that. And he's OK at the moment. He's unscathed as we stand. He's got to get to the finish, though. He'll have to push it, and over he goes. And the time is 51 seconds for Ticket to the Moon. It was looking so promising. He might just have taken his eye off the ball. Dude, 
Was that as comfortable as it looked? Uh, not really, it was a bit manic. <laughs> I mean, it was flapping almost like a sail. Do you think it slowed you down? No, I think that was it's quite streamlined. You just kind of snagged on that banner, didn't you? And it slowed you yeah, down. Bit of a shame. First time I used the brakes, I did a skid into the bales. You made it down in one piece. You can like put this in the garden or something. I will eventually, yeah. I might put a motor on it. Hey, what of it? Now you're talking. Fantastic work, put it there. Go and just put your feet up and good work guys. Well done. Hammer time. Well, there's been plenty of action so far, but rest assured there's still all of this to come from the Red Bull Soapbox race in Cork. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to the Red Bull Soapbox race here in Cork, Ireland. It's time to get straight back into the action, so let's see how our next set of have go heroes handle the steepest course in soapbox race history. Darren, who have you got there? Well, I've got half-tapped now, Tim. Um, some of the drivers have looked half-tapped today when they've been going down from the top and losing it, but we'll see what these can do. Then off they go. Oh, he's lost it already. He's gone already. You can't spin it there. Try and get him back in a straight line at least, if possible. Right, on we go again. Let's try again now. See if we can get this run well and truly moving. It looks like he's got the potential to be quite a quick soapbox, doesn't it, this one? It's just whether they can control it well enough. Still got to get round the burn, which is not easy. Well, he's gone through there and lost it again, look. Look at the wheel go at the front, then, of course, the back end comes round and you, you've got to start again. They'll have to give him a push. On he goes down towards the finish, and let's have a look at the time. 107. This is where it all started to go wrong, didn't it? Hi, Team Hot to Trot here. I'm Warren, the driver. We have Martin, the carpenter, Anthony, the fabricator. Darren, who's the good tea maker, and Franny just looks good. The design of our soapbox, it's actually based on the Only Fools and Horses, Robin Reliant, the three-wheel van. The hardest part of our build was definitely the steering. We went from three-wheel to four-wheel, went through about four or five buckled wheels. It hasn't gone well, and we're still not quite sure if it's going to make it all the way down. Here's hoping. Brakes are very bad. We've tried them at home, and it wasn't a very steep hill, and they were working fine. When I was just pulling in here today, I went to pull it and we ended up about 30 metres too far down the road. But we don't need brakes, apparently, so I'm told. We'll have to see. My biggest nightmare, I think, is going to be the big berm going around the corner. I'm not too sure if our soapbox is going to make it around it. I have a little plan in my head, but whether that goes right, I'm not too sure. It is quite steep. We looked at it from the bottom up, it didn't look too bad. And then when we came up here and looked from the top down, it's, uh, it's very scary, actually. I think we're definitely the craziest anyways. As far as crazy goes, they are the craziest guys I know. So our message to all the rest of the teams is, you are all plunkers. So from Peckham to Cork, and you'll be amazed to know that Hot to Trot is a, an only Fools and Horses themed soapbox. Off it goes, those big wheels. I'm not confident about those big wheels at all. So far, so good though. On the way down. Bounces over the bone shaker, the wheel's still intact at this stage. Those big mountain bike wheels, he's losing it now. Straw bales helped him there. Now Warren, the driver, so far, oh, he's lost the back end, there's half of it gone. There's still enough left, though, to keep it going forward, and he's loving it in there. Over the next little jump there, towards the finish line. 45 seconds, that's not bad at all. They did far better than I think they thought they were going to. Really good run. Well, so much for it falling off the back of a van, the back of the van fell off. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't realise until I got out at the end. What, you had no idea the back had gone? Hadn't a clue what was going on. It was just one corner at a time. The adrenaline, man, it gets you going. The crowd were loving you. Could you feel them as you were going down? Uh, yeah, from the berms on, I actually could really get it. The steering was holding straight, so I could kind of play around a bit with the team. Well, this time next year, you know. We'll be millionaires! Exactly! And back to the next team, Irish Air Corps, 
Ender is the driver. They intend to take what they know about aviation and apply it to road racing. So what could go wrong? That looks the part, doesn't it? That looks nice and streamlined. Whether that propeller gets in the way, we'll wait and see. Uh, they've made a solid start, though, at the top of this very steep soapbox circuit. Down they go over the bone shaker, no problem through there. Picking up plenty of speed towards the berm, which looms on the horizon. That's how steep it is. Here's the berm. And he managed to get the brakes on in time to get through there. That's neatly done. Now, though, has he got enough momentum to keep the speed up towards the bottom section of the circuit? He thinks he has. Down towards the finish line and over in 47 seconds. And that went really well. They came here hoping to do well, and that's exactly what they've done. Fantastic job. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was, it was excellent, yeah. You didn't quite hit Mach 10, but it was steady, solid. I think the crowd appreciated that. Yeah, I thought so. Like, um, I have my twin brother here to replace me in case I was wiped out, but thankfully it didn't need to do that. You made it pretty cleanly in the end. Put it there. Excellent job, boys. Really sharp helmets as well. I love that look. So now we've got the green machine. And a reminder that it's not just about speed, it's not just about getting the soapbox down the hill. Creativity and performance count for a lot too. There goes Green Machine with lots and lots of speed at the top, but there's no surprise there. I'm not quite sure where he can see. Oh, there he is, just through that dark window there. Uh, flying down, really good run at the top, got through the difficult bit. Now, can he keep some speed towards the bottom? So, oh, he's gone at the burn. Just thought he was going to get around the burn there and then try and keep the momentum going. There you see it. Too much speed, loses balance, over he goes. Now the green machine bites the dust at that stage. And so now it's whether they can get down to the bottom. He's having a good old push behind, isn't he? Over the... Oh, he's, oh, he's gone! <laughs> he's gone! Whose round is this? Is he yours? No, he's back on, no shame. He's not even red in the face, look. He doesn't mind. Over the finish line, 103. You've got to give the pusher a tremendous amount of credit. Looks so good at this stage, over they go. Dude, are you all right? Uh, never been better. There was so much conviction in your pushing <laughs> that you had a little trip. I wasn't going to stop, you know. Hey, the crowd loved that. Yeah, there's still some to thank for later. Well, good work. Fantastic job, guys. Go and have a breather. I think, you, I think you've earned it. So flights and sights come next which is uh, basically the iconic Cork City tour bus, which has been shrunken down and wings have been added. Uh, let's see whether he... Look at the steepness of that course, it's ridiculous. Anyway, down goes the bus, down the start ramp, and away they go. Uh, off they go, picking up speed. They went OK! Oh, no, they're not! Thought they were doing OK, then they started to go. Managed to keep all four wheels on the ground, which is astonishing, really. Over the bone shaker, wobbling all over the place. He can hardly steer it, look. Down we go towards the berm, little punch of the air, another wobble, still going towards the berm. It's tricky here, around the berm he goes. Oh, he's managed to do it, has he? No, oh, not quite. He's stuck on the berm. Got to get it down back on the circuit because the time's ticking by. Off he goes again. Over that little ramp towards the finish. And can he nurse it down over the line? Yes, he can. 55 seconds. It would have been so much better. He just had too much speed there. And that left front wheel just started to buckle underneath. And he lost all momentum around that second berm. Hello. We are Team Silly Goose. On the team we have Cyprian, he's the general manager. Owen Durham, who is the lunatic driver. Sully and myself, Stokesy, the general mayhem, antics, banter, crack people around Team Silly Goose. Stokesy is not really helpful, but he's great to have around. We've known each other for years. We've all lived together, played rugby together, and kind of grew up together and drinking together, so we know each other well. <laughs> Our softbox is a goose. As we all know, gooses are highly intelligent uh, when it comes to travel. The frame of our cart is made mostly of timber. We use a chicken's cage, then we took all the wire out of it, and we wrap our goose cart with that. It's not a real goose, it's a fake goose. <laughs> so the design, like every other kind of softbox, you need to have four wheels. Um, so with four wheels, We've been grafting for months. Blood, sweat, tears, you know, arguments, fights. It took about three days. It's pointed like a goose. Perfect technique like a goose. That aerodynamic 
looseness, our team is definitely not qualified to build a card safely. Look, it's a daunting task for him. He's in the leagues of Rubens Barrichello. He's, he's the next Nantan Senna, you know? Cool as a breeze, cool as a cucumber. We're very worried. We're the mother geese, and this is our goose, you know? We're just adding the final touches. We'll say we'll be spray painting the eyes, the beak, the nose, uh, the ears of the goose. There'll be a lot of feathers, a lot of glue, a lot of flesh. Our message to the other teams, you better bring your A game because we're going to keep no prisoners. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. <laughs> and he genuinely believes everything he's just told you. This is Team Silly Goose. Uh, this is a silly bunch of guys. We'll see what they do on the way down. Owen is the driver. I have no idea what they're doing for the performance at the top. Anyway, there's the uh, soapbox model on a goose that looks nothing like a goose. It's basically a chicken coop on four wheels, and now it's on its roof. He's lost it completely there, look. He tried to stop it with his foot, which is never going to happen, really, is it? Down they go again. There's the bone shaker. What's it going to be like over there? It's OK. Oh, it's <laughs> just about OK. Picking up a bit more speed now. Oh, he's lost it again. No, he's OK. Just when he gets to a certain speed, he can't control it, can he? There's the berm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's through there. Is he? No, yeah, no. Still going, needs a push, needs a push. Give him a push. Keep it going. Almost there. Wobble again. <laughs> there we go towards the finish line. What's the time? One minute and 16. They didn't give him a push until he got past the finish line. That's when he lost it at the top. When it starts to go, it's got to go. Oh, look at his face. He felt that. Good job, man. You're bleeding. What happened? I don't know. I fell over. I was fine, though. It wasn't that painful, to be fair. Sonic, are you proud of him? The man did us fierce proud, look. It was a stunning performance. I, 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 I don't know what to say, lad. The man went out there from the word go. He did, no ifs, no buts. He put the ball over the bar. He let the ball do the work. He led the golden egg for the golden goose. So proud, so emotional. Well done, guys. Go and have a rest. Come on. Oh, it's a hug, Sonic. Thanks, mate. It's that fine line between emotion and insanity that we saw there from the Ganderini. Now we've got Red FM, Rebel Rocket. The local DJ is going to make his way down in this soapbox and see what he can do. He's promising big things. Can he deliver? Down goes the Red FM Rebel Rocket. Nice and quick at the top part of the circuit. Over the bone shaker, no problem through there. Still in one piece and going strong and going quick. Has he got too much speed for the berm? That's the big question. No, he's through there, OK. No problem at this stage. Starts to celebrate, he's enjoying it. They are too. And this rebel rocket is on the way down, although losing speed towards the bottom where the circuit flattens out. And in actual fact, there's not enough speed to get it towards the finish line, so... He's going to have to do this himself. And we get the time registered at 45 seconds. Could have been better. We could have done with a bit of help from those two slightly earlier. There we see it through the burn. It was OK. He managed to get the brakes on in time. But by doing that, lost too much momentum towards the bottom. What a run. Absolutely. Um, just, just went with it. As Colin McRae said, if in doubt, flat out, no brakes. And that's what he did. So now we go to Class Grass Mobile. Uh, Cormac is the driver. They're a group of old childhood friends who reunited for the soapbox race. There we are, bringing people together in Cork today. And it's nice and quick at the top. Here's the bone shaker. Seems to be slightly imbalanced, doesn't it? Leaning to one side already. Anyway, it's all right up to now. Nice and quick. Moving towards the berm. Very quick through there. Oh, he's gone. Look at that. Hope that's just his helmet. Watch this. Wow. That's as spectacular a crash as we've seen all day. Well, give him 10 out of 10 for bravery because he's got straight back in. Whether they'll get to the bottom, I don't know. The front wheel completely gone on the left side. 
They're finding it really hard to move at this stage, the boys. I think they might have to give it up. There's the crash, look at that. The helmet went and everything. He's so lucky there. Wow. Thankfully, he's in one piece. Hi, we're from Team She Thinks My Tracks Are Sexy. And our soapbox is called the Pulling Machine. On our team, we have Timmy. He's our chief painter. We also have Richard. He's our chief welder. Then we have Simon, who's the good-looking one on the team. I'm the driver of our soapbox, Ken. The only one brave enough to go down the hill in it. Our soapbox is the pulling machine. It's based on a John Deere tractor. It's made of recycled crates off lawnmowers. It's a very strong chassis. It'll go over all the jumps excellently. As for the berms, they're not going to be a problem. We're going to be right up them. The brakes is a bit of our own bodging, but I'm pretty sure we have them sorted. Uh, the best features of our soapbox would be, one, its looks, and two, its ability for high speed. I'd say 100 mile an hour, no problem. There is no weakness, or we made it. I haven't seen the course yet. I've heard that it's quite steep, but I like to live on the edge, so we'll, we'll take it in our stride. He who dares wins. <laughs> so the pulling machine, and I know that quite a few, quite a few of you sitting there now thinking, I used to have a car that I used to call that when I was younger. It's based on a tractor. It's not very big. See what it's like. Four lads, some killed there. They want to win today and become heroes, role models, and mentors. That's the power of the Red Bull soapbox race. And down it goes. And he's wobbling all over the place at this stage. He said he's bodged the brakes, which would concern me a little bit. Here we go towards the berm, if he can get there. Oh, he's hit a problem. The wheel's gone low. Both of them have gone. Look at that one pop off there. Well, you've got to carry it. There's no other choice. Down to the finish line, 108. When the two front wheels come off, you've got nowhere left to go. The pulling machine is now being pulled itself. Dude, let me talk to you. What happened? Well, it started off good, but our wheels let us down in the end, really. The vehicle was strong enough, the wheels weren't. That's a shame, that's a shame. We are the pulling machine, that's you not anymore. You're looking really good today, by the way. I love the dungarees, really nice. Oh, stop it, stop it, really? You guys, don't let me even start on you guys. Beautiful. We're gearing up for a thrilling finale here at the Red Bull Soapbox race, but with plenty more good looking teams left to take to this track, that trophy is still well and truly up for grabs. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to the Red Bull Soapbox race here in Cork Island. Now, the majority of the teams have taken to the course with a varying degree of success and failure. But as we reach the climax of the race, can any of the remaining teams clinch victory? It's over to every pirate's favourite commentator, Darren Fletcher! <laughs> what do you say to that? Apart from R. Anyway, Wheel and the Gig is next. And the driver is Ender. They are four archaeologists. And I'm just looking at the design of this one. I'm not necessarily sure they can see that well, which at the speeds they're going to hurtle down this course could be a problem. Those little small wheels as well might make it difficult to control when the speed gets particularly high. And they're off down here towards the berm. They've got the bone shaker to go for it first. They've done that. Oh, look at that! Straight over the top of the bales and into the berm on the other side. Look at this through there. Didn't roll it initially, he actually skirted along the top of the bale. Good to see the end is OK. Very, very spectacular through there. They're going to try and push it down to the bottom. Um, set a time. Great spirit here in Cork today, as there always is around the soapbox race. 105. And all that speed at the top led to one thing. Doom and... Oh, he's out again. Doom and gloom at the berm. Did he mean that? I think he did. There's that spectacular crash, right along the top of the, uh, the straw bale. I'm from the Red Arrows. I'm Dave, I'm the driver of the Red Arrow. On our team we have Phil, fabricator, Philip, tire pressure, Jamie, 
Keymaker and Ryan, software engineer. Our car is modelled on a Formula One car, so we said we'd go with the pit stop at the start line, then we'll take off down the hill. We have BMX stunt bike wheels and we have BMX stunt tyres as well on it. Keep it low to the ground, keep the wheels going in a straight line and have it as aerodynamic as possible. We took it out the other night at 11 o'clock in the dark, so no one would see the stupidity. We got up to speeds of 50 mile an hour and it's still in one piece. I actually thought it'd be steeper, the pictures actually make it look worse. It's not half as bad as what people think. It's on your hill, it's on your gravity. Being one of the last cars to go down isn't really an advantage, it's just basically save the best to last. We're going to try and win. We'll give it our best shot. We didn't come to come second or we didn't come here to make any friends. My message to the other teams, just pick up your bits after you because I ain't coming down, I don't want any debris. Well, he's certainly talking the talk. Time to find out whether this red arrow can walk the walk. Dave, the driver, it looks quick. They say it's quick and they're promising big things. And that's a drill you can hear. Off we go then. The red arrow is on its way. And it's very quick in the top part of the circuit. There's the bone shaker, no problem through there. Can he keep the... St oh, he's lost a little bit of time there because he's spun it. Too much speed. All the speed coming down here started to line it up for the berm and he lost it there, uh, which is going to be so disappointing for this particular team because they were promising big things and they've not been able to see it through. Around the burn we go, but all that early promise at the top has come to nothing at this stage. A little bit ragged through the second part of the berm as well. Over the jump towards the finish line. And the time is 51 seconds. It won't be good enough today. And all that talk at the top turned out to be cheap talk from the Red Arrow. Mate. That was so quick from the start. Yeah. And then what happened? Well, the way we work over here is all or nothing. First overall or home in a ball. That's how I work too. Yeah. And they ended up with home in a ball. There we go. So now we've got the Happy Hippies, which is a group of friends who have built this soapbox out of waste timber, scavenged metal, and mismatched nuts and bolts. It sounds like a load of rubbish to me. But there we go. We will find out whether it's good when it gets onto the circuit here in court. Down we go. The hippie's chasing after it. Oh, he's gone straight into the bales at the top. You've got to remember to steer. If you just go straight, look at those silly little wheels at the front. They've got no chance with that. Straight into the straw. You've got to turn the steering wheel whichever way the corner goes to give you a chance. Uh, back they go, look, with the team chasing behind over the bone shaker. Little bit wobbly still, and straight into the straw again. Is there anybody in there? They're just not trying to steer the soapbox. Down again, around the berm, uh, just about. No speed through there, though. It's really difficult to control now. All the steering's gone. She's been stood there a while. Over that ramp now. And over the finish line at last. The Happy Hippies have made it. One minute and 40 seconds. There's the bone shaker. And there's the straw bale. Could you see out the front of that thing? No. Not really. Not a thing. I mean, you had a couple of a couple of scrapes, a couple of tumbles, but you made it. The back's kind of missing. But are you happy? You are a happy hippie? Oh, fantastic. It's great. We lost the back wheel. You spread, you spread peace and joy down that course. Everyone seems to enjoy that. Yeah, it was great fun. What are you going to do with it now? Are you going to go cruise the countryside? We're going to do it again. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Next year, though. Next year. Hi, my name is Michael, and I'm the driver. Our team is John Brennan, Michael Brennan, and Damo O'Neill. We have skills, but confidence is probably, we're lacking it a lot. <laughs> our soapbox is made out of a steel space frame. It's a hospital bed, and we have wheels off a motocross bike and brakes off a motocross bike. The main weak point of that card is me. <laughs> the card itself are very confident in it. The only way that's going to not make it down the hill is if I make a mistake. That's a fair possibility I will. The teammates have already said to me they're going to pull the brake hoses off just as they push me off, so I'm going to have no choice other than just go down it. <laughs> My message for the other teams is watch out that you don't end up in a hospital bed yourselves. <laughs> Thank you. 
So let's have a look at crisis in A&E. We hope there's not a crisis on the way down here in Cork or a trip to A&E for the team who are going to go down this very steep circuit now. And off they go. They're all friends. Mickey's the driver and he's set off very, very fast from the top of the course. The onboard camera shows you just how quick he's going. Over that first ramp, the bone shaker, wobbling through there, but speeding down the course. He's got the berm coming up. He even manages to celebrate on the way down. Towards the berm and around it, got the brakes on in time. Now he's got to keep the momentum going as he flies down the circuit, over the final ramp, down towards the finish line. Can he keep it moving? Down they go, he's over the finish line. 47 seconds. It was quick at the top and not so quick at the bottom, and that's what cost them in the end. Team Hercules, the last team of the day. And we'll see what this one can do. Team of two couples who have known each other since high school. There's part BMX, part wheelchair, and a couple of kegs strapped to this. And it's really quick at the top, isn't it? Around the berm, and he's kept speed and momentum through there, which not many have managed to do today. Now it's all about the last two obstacles at the bottom and to try and set a good time, running out of steam towards the end, just enough to get to the finish line. What about the time? 41 seconds for Team Hercules. That's all we've got time for today. Tim, who's taking away the prizes from Cork today? In third place, we have the frantic parental peddling of Daddy Slowdown. Flying into second are the Irish Air Corps, but today's kings of St. Patrick's Hill and the fastest food in Cork are the Jumbo Breakfast Roll. And Gendel is with them now. Well, here they are, your winners. How are you feeling after that? Over the moon, absolutely amazed. Did you think when you came here this morning that you would take this trophy? Since about two and a half weeks ago, when we started building, we were in it to win it. We were coming down here to take home the trophy. And what do you reckon was the secret to your success today? The speed and the strength of the car and Teamwork that absolutely amazing for the last few weeks. Every evening we're all there together to get this thing ready to survive down the hill. Well, there you go. There's your winners of the Red Bull Soapbox race in Cork Jumbo Breakfast Roll. Well, as the sun sets on St. Patrick's Hill, you've got to say you can't argue with that, really. I'm not arguing. It was amazing. Yeah. The crowd did not disappoint. The performances were brilliant. Mm -hmm. What was your highlight? I would have to say Trashin' 8 of 5,000, Oscar the Grouch, with his double ejection, one straight onto the hip at the top and then another one out the front. Yeah. He's going to feel that tomorrow. Yeah, he what will. What about you? Uh, for me, it was the cart that just epitomises Red Bull Soapbox racing. Mm -hmm. It was Daddy Slow Down. Oh, fantastic. I mean, the creativity was brilliant. It looked fabulous. I'd never seen anything like it. And then basically the creativity just disintegrated its way down the course and it had everybody laughing. And just the image of it, yeah. well, that's funny in any language. Well, all that's left to say from Ireland is a big slant from me and a goodbye from me.